Well, Optimus is intended to be a sort of a fully functional humanoid robot, and it'll be capable of doing a wide range of tasks. So basically, you can just ask it to walk your dog, take care of your house, babysit the kids, teach cook the kids, uh, cook dinner, play the piano. You know, it's a generalized humanoid robot. I think everyone will want one, because why not? I think there'll be at least one for every person, and then a whole bunch more in industry making things. When we think of robots, we think of machines, AI, Elon Musk, and futuristic companies like Tesla. Maybe Leonardo da Vinci comes to mind with his Renaissance sketches and mechanical knights. But here's the truth. Robotics didn't begin in Silicon Valley. And it didn't even begin in Renaissance Italy. The first great leap into robotics came centuries earlier, in the heart of the Islamic Golden Age. Did you know that in the 12th century, a Muslim inventor designed an entire army of mechanical soldiers that could march, lift swords, and guard a palace completely without human control? Well, at least, that's what the Mongol invaders thought when they entered the palace and discovered Ismail al-Jazari's inventions, a mechanical genius often called the father of robotics. Living under the Abbasid Caliphate, al-Jazari engineered machines so advanced that Europe would not rediscover similar techniques until centuries later. Among his creations were intricate clocks, automated fountains, musical machines, and most famously, robotic warriors. In Baghdad, the jewel of the Abbasid Empire, al-Jazari constructed soldiers powered by ingenious hydraulic systems. Beneath the palace floors, hidden channels of water pressure drove gears, cams, and pistons that controlled the movements of each bronze warrior. These were not crude toys. Each mechanical soldier was individually programmed with a different set of movements. Together, they would march in formation for hours, rising and lowering their swords in perfect synchronization. But to Al-Jazari, it was engineering, applied science centuries ahead of its time, and in today's standards, they were automated fountains, intricate clockwork, and musical machines. But back in the day, to common people, this looked like sorcery. For years, these machines guarded the caliphs of Baghdad. They weren't just symbols of power. They were proof of how far Islamic science had pushed the boundaries of human invention. But then came 1258. The Mongols swept into Baghdad in one of the most brutal invasions in recorded history. When they stormed the palace, they found the bronze soldiers still functioning, swords rising and falling. The invaders, unprepared for such a sight, believed they were facing demons or supernatural beings. Terrified, they smashed the machines into pieces. But the destruction didn't stop there. The Mongols went on to annihilate the House of Wisdom, Baghdad's legendary library and research institution. For centuries, Muslim scholars had gathered knowledge from around the world to the library to translate, preserve, and expand upon knowledge from Greece, India, China, and Persia. The library contained texts on medicine, astronomy, mathematics, philosophy, engineering, and even works on optics and chemistry that Europe would not rediscover until the Renaissance. When the Mongols destroyed it, they threw countless manuscripts into the Tigris River. Chroniclers say the river ran black with ink for days. What humanity lost in that moment can never be measured. And yet, against all odds, al jazaris technical drawing survived. His book, The Book of Knowledge of Ingenious Mechanical Devices, 1206, was copied and studied long after the Mongols were gone. Centuries later, these very diagrams reached Europe, where they inspired none other than Leonardo da Vinci and his own robotic designs. That means the very foundation of what the West calls the Renaissance in robotics was rooted in the work of a Muslim inventor from the 12th century. And yet, how often do we hear the story? School books praise Da Vinci, Edison, and Tesla, but rarely mention Al-Jazari, Al-Khwarizmi, the father of algebra, or Ibn al-Haytham, the father of optics. The truth is, Western narratives of science and innovation have consistently downplayed, ignored, and erased Muslim contributions, framing progress as if it only began when Europe woke up from the Middle Ages. But the Islamic Golden Age was not a footnote, it was a foundation. Without it, the so-called Renaissance would have looked very different. So, the next time someone tells you robots are modern or credits the West alone for technological progress, remember this. In the palaces of Baghdad, centuries before da Vinci sketched his knight, an army of bronze warriors were already marching. 
Like, share, and subscribe to Truth Shall Prevail.